This morning we're going to disassemble our Compact Presario 1810 laptop. And for this, we're going to need a couple of simple tools. I have my screwdriver and bit set. And we're going to need a Torx bit. And in my set, this is a T8. And they're magnetic, and it just fits in right here. We'll set this aside. I'm also going to use a metal spudger like this that has flat edges that I can use to pry various panels and components out if I need to. So the first thing we always do when we disassemble a laptop, and this is part of the manufacturer also, is we take out the battery. Even though the battery in this one is essentially dead, it doesn't charge anymore, we'll pull it out anyways. <clears throat> and in the compacts, it's just like this. We'll start out by taking out the base screws for the wrist rest. There are three, but this laptop came to me missing the one in the middle. <clears throat> All right, and I will set these aside. After we've got that done, we'll flip it back and we'll open it up. And what we want to do is get the wrist rest out and then we'll be able to remove the keyboard and get at the internal components. Now, with these laptops, I think we'd all agree that it can seem scary, the noises they make as we pull them apart. Um, if you're careful, the components should come apart fairly easily. Uh, without too much prying. If you really have to pry at something, then you have to wonder if you've pulled all the screws out. That's just my thought. And there's one here that I really want to get at. There we go. And then there's a couple of small little clips in the front also that I want to get at right here. There. So the wrist rest is out and there's a little cable that connects the mechanism to the actual motherboard. And here we have our trackpad and we have our buttons. We're going to set this aside. The first thing we can see is we can see the IDE hard drive here. And it looks like it's a simple tech brand. It's a, um, it's a two and a half inch, 20 gig IDE hard drive. It um, hasn't given me any grief yet since I've started working on this laptop. And I'm not going to mess with the hard drive. I'm going to leave it in there. But if we wanted to remove it, there are a couple of screws that hold the chassis down for it. It would slip out. And it is, like I said, IDE, so it is in the pins. A person could get an IDE to SATA or SATA adapter and use a compact flash in here if they wanted. I'm a bit of a purist and... You know, I also believe if something's working, don't mess with it. So I am not going to take out that hard drive. All right. Next on to the keyboard, which just slides out like this. 
I am not going to remove this ribbon cable. Ribbon cables to me are the devil. Um, it does unclip and then we can clip it and get it, get it back in there. But there's very little room to work right in here. And I am not going to disconnect the keyboard right now. It does not need to be done in order to remove any of the components right here. So we have the metal heat spreader, which actually has a heat sink on the other side of this. And the heat sink, which is sitting on top of the CPU assembly, spreads the heat throughout the chassis. And then there's a fan that picks it up and spreads it. And there are three Torx screws. One. Two, and they're buried pretty deep. These two are actually in the heat sink. And again, it helps to have a magnetic screwdriver set for sure. And three. And we'll pull these screws out and we'll set them in yet another location. All right, here's our heat sink and spreader. We have some remaining thermal paste or pad compound. Um, it's worked up till now. I'm not going to change it. I'm going to leave it. Some of you might object to that, but I'm going to leave it as is. So it's an aluminum heat block, aluminum heat sink block that is adhered to the plate. And of course it then distributes the heat throughout the chassis. And we'll set this aside. Here's our CPU. The CPU, the Pentium 2 CPU, is um, a CPU that's ball mounted onto a daughter card, which I believe has additional cache RAM. And then there's a socket right here with pins on the motherboard and um, a socket actually on the daughter card for the CPU that clips in here. Um, and then there's a, a metal brace that keeps this down flat and it's screwed here and here onto the motherboard. In order to access that, we have to take out the modem. And the modem has a little plastic shield to prevent any metal to metal contact with the modem and the heat spreader. So if we take this off, and again, I'm gonna set these screws aside, they're very small. I'll set these little screws aside and this little plastic heat shield comes out, tucks in just like that. I'll set this aside. And then we have our Lucent modem, which just pops off a little socket here. And it has a little power cable going onto the motherboard. I'm going to leave that. Here's our floppy drive, which if we wanted, we could unscrew and slide out. On the other side, we have our DVD drive, which we'd have to remove the hard drive to actually pull out the DVD drive. And then our PCMCIA card slot right here. And it has two type ones or one type two. So a person could put an additional hard drive in here for that, um, a network card. Network card would probably be the most likely PCMCIA card that I think anyone would have used in this computer back in the day. So we have the modem out and now we have the CPU exposed and again it's the same Torx bit and we'll remove that like such, set it aside and we then have the CPU which I'm not going to pull right now, and I'll tell you why. A, I already did it when I confirmed that I could disassemble and reassemble this laptop and have a working laptop. I was very, very hesitant and careful in originally removing this and then reseating it in the socket. What I will do is I'll attach my shorts video showing the portion where I had the CPU in my hand and the actual socket area there. Um, I don't want to re 
I don't want to take a chance of damaging it again. Let's put it that way, folks. It's been out, we've videotaped it, and we've put it back, and it's snug in there, and it works. Hello friends, this is actually a teardown in reverse on my Compact Rosario 1810. This is the Pentium 2 CPU. It fits onto the motherboard and it comes contained in a case that if we take it apart, we have something I've never actually dealt with before, which is a laptop mobile Pentium 2 processor. And this isn't actually the pinout. This is actually where the pins on the motherboard fit into. This that's actually a socket. So we have chip on a little board here, probably with cache memory, and that's how she fits right there in our laptop. Mobile Pentium 2. The only other thing a person could do if they wanted to dig any further would be to replace the, um, the BIOS battery. Um, the BIOS battery on this one has apparently met the end of its life. And every time we boot, it does give me an F1 to continue booting. But the BIOS screen itself still remembers the hard drive configuration and the boot configuration. So I don't see any need to remove more components to get to the battery when I'm just as, I'm just as happy pressing F1. To get everything going so that all being said let's put it back together together ha huh. right here is where the modem plugs in we'll make sure that that is lined up and we can line it up with these posts that we will use for the screws we'll put the heat shield back and line these holes up and get these screwed in. Kudos to Compaq for making it one bit, one Torx bit for the entire assembly disassembly. I don't have to switch between uh, Phillips or another smaller or larger Torx. I just use this and everything goes together so far pretty neatly. All right, again, the heat dissipation plate. And heat sink. And that sits right there. And there are two little pins on the heat sink. Two little pins here that correspond to two little pin holes on the CPU and that will all fit neatly. We'll know when it's in place. It'll all just fit nicely. get that aha see this is how easy it is I have to put the bracket on for the CPU retention now again I did this backwards so I put the modem back on before I put the um, CPU retention and I do apologize for that it's time wasted but it just goes to show you need to be methodical when it comes to these. And there is actually no access to do it without taking the modem back off. Luckily, that's easy enough. And there we go. So we'll get the retention bracket in place. We'll screw it down. And I noted that it wasn't there because the heat sink did not fit right. So, all right. A 
an upcoming project, another laptop disassembly, reassembly, and CPU swap I'm looking forward to is I did purchase a first generation Core i5 um, dual core four threaded CPU for my latest laptop find. It was part of this group of four. Here, let me put the heatsink back on, and this will fit a lot better. Now, now it'll actually make sense. All right. And that's replacing a dual core Pentium on a socket G1. Hopefully with that, uh, with a Core i5 that actually works on it. The only way to know if the BIOS will support it is just to actually go ahead and try it. So that should be interesting to see if that CPU works or not. If it does, I actually plan to put Windows 10 on that older laptop. It was originally a Windows 7 home and um, actually it would be usable as a uh, low powered Core i5 laptop. Uh, if I can reuse something, I'm all about it. All right, so we've got the heat sink and dissipation plate back on. So far, so good. The keyboard, again, slides. There are little retention slides on top. And you just want to get it tucked in there. Sometimes easier said than done, and it fits right there. You'll know when it's there because there are little slots for these little plastic clips and little brackets to sit on. And then it does have a little give and it does want to pop up a little bit. That's fine because the wrist rest will hold that in place. Now, we don't want to forget to reconnect this so our actual trackpad works. I'm going to get that in there. All right, that's up in there, clipped in nicely. And then everything should just snap back into place. And if it doesn't want to snap back into place, we make it snap back into place with our little spudger. All right, looking good. We'll close the lid, we'll flip it, and we'll put those screws back on. The wrist rest. And don't put them in too tight. These screws are actually just screwing in probably just into the bare plastic, the ABS plastic. And if you screw too tight and you snap it off, that could create a little bit of havoc because if the wrist rest doesn't fit snug enough, there's most likely the potential for an issue with flex here. And there we go all back together neatly. We put the battery back in. Right side up. We clip it in place and we have disassembled, checked the CPU and reassembled our Presario 1810. And I will state that the wrist rest and keyboard disassembly for this particular model is in keeping very much with um, the compact series, the Thick Boy, I like to call them. This is a Thick Boy laptop with the Thick Boy series. Um, 
everything kind of fits together the same way. Uh, the 1200 series, the 1800 series, uh, they use sort of a standard chassis build on this. Um, so there we go. I appreciate everyone watching. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And um, feel free, like some comments, sub if you like what I'm doing here. Uh, we'll get on to the other laptops later. And um, again, have a great weekend. This is Friday morning, so have a great weekend, folks.